Hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So in this video, I will show you how I lit, shot and processed this image. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel may be for you. So you might want to subscribe to the channel and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see some of my images, you could also follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Now, this video that you're seeing now is somewhat different from the normal videos that I actually show you because this was a commission shoot. In other words, I was shooting a maternity photo shoot of a couple that I've shot way back. Actually, if you guys are familiar with the channel and you see my OBB, this is the couple whose wedding I shot for that particular OBB. Now I am shooting their maternity. Unfortunately though, I never got a chance or I planned to actually shoot a video while I was shooting them but we had a little bit of time constraint and I had to shoot five layouts in about two hours and therefore I wasn't really able to shoot the video anymore but rather I asked my assistant photographer to actually take some BTS photos so that I can explain to you guys how these images came about. Okay, so first things first. The camera that I used for this particular shoot is this one. This is my Sony A7R Mark IV with a 24 to 70 2.8 lens. Now, the reason why I was shooting with a 24 to 70 was the fact that, as I said earlier, I was shooting five layouts in a span of two hours. So I needed that flexibility. I didn't want to have to change lenses anymore. The 24 to 70 really gave me a good focal length and shooting at 2.8 to F4 would be actually be perfect if you're shooting a couple because you don't want to actually balk at the other person. So this was a perfect um, lens for me to use for this actual shoot to make it very quick and efficient. Now the light that I used was this one, the Nanlite Forza 60B. The reason why I chose to use a continuous light, a 60 watt continuous light like this Nanlite Forza 60B was because I shot in a studio called Studio Namu that had beautiful existing ambient light. Now, all I needed to do was really have a light that I could color balance to the existing ambient light, hence the bicolor version or the 60B was very essential. And I wanted to direct the light to the subject. So I used a multitude of, of modifiers for this shoot, but for this particular layout, I chose this one. This is the Nanlite um, Lantern 60. In other words, it's a lantern softbox um, that's 60, 60 cm, so about 24 inches, give or take. And what I did was I installed the flags um, on the lantern, and I will explain to you guys in a minute why I did that. Now, I also shot on aperture priority. Now, the reason why I shot in aperture priority was I said I needed things to be fast and efficient and quick. And I really do love shooting in aperture priority when I'm shooting with ambient light. So I had my ISO set at auto ISO, my aperture set at 2.8, so my shutter speed and my ISO was really dependent on my ca on the camera itself, on what settings it would give me, and all I did was touch this one here. This is the exposure compensation dial. So if I wanted it darker, I'll just adjust this one to, to underexpose, or if I want it brighter, I'll just adjust this one to make it brighter. Now, I match that now with this light, okay? The white balance here was very critical. Actually, if you look at the scene, this scene here, the white balance was really about at 3200 Kelvin, and I set my light to 3200 Kelvin. However, my camera's, my camera's white balance was not set at 3200 Kelvin because I didn't want it to be neutral. I wanted to still have that warmer tone to give the impression that it was all lit with natural light that's in existence in that area and it gives that warmth to the image. So I set my white balance actually to 4000 Kelvin, which for me was a little bit too warm. So I adjusted it also in post-production. But the most important thing was that I set my white balance in camera so that everything was consistent. So if I needed to change my white balance for one image, all I needed to do was fix one and copy all the adjustments and everything will be very consistent, okay? So now here, let's go to the BTS image. Now, as you can see, one of the issues that I had here, I'll show you, is this area here. That's the reason why I put these flags on this Nanlite lantern. 
By adding these flags here, I was able to control the spill of light here because if you notice here in the image where I didn't have the flags, everything was just so lit and because this thing was so reflective that it was really um, competing on with regards to focus on your subject. So that's one thing that I had to adjust with this one. That's why I had to put the flags. Now, as you can see here, it's a Nanlite Forza 60 with a lantern modifier. My assistant Mark was holding it. And normally I would have a boom stand here, but of course, again, we were limited in terms of time. It would, it's easier for me to, for my assistant to actually hold it instead of having to set up a boom stand. Plus, the reason why I had it here above was because I wanted to give the impression that it was lit by just overhead light. I just wanted to make it look as natural as possible. And again, Mark can attest to that. The reason why we love using this Forza 60s is because they're so light. Look at how light they are. So even with this modifier and the light stand, it was very easy for him to just boom it up. It wasn't really no, it was really no effort at all. Okay, so now, I'll show you one of the shots that I actually took before I came out with a final product. This was a shot that I took. Overall, the light was already okay. The post was okay. This area is here. I had to fix when I saw it because I needed to cover this area with the gown again. But there was something glaring here that made me actually redo the shoot again because when I shot this, this was okay already and we were about to stop. And then I realized, of course, this one, but this one could have been fixed in post easily. But this one here, this particular thing here actually was distracting from her face. Now, all I needed to do was really just move it here. As I, you know, some people will say, oh, we can just remove that in post. But you know what? If you can get things right straight out of camera, do that, please. So we just moved this here and we came about with this final image. So there we go. That is how simple the shoot was. Basically, we pinpointed the area in which we wanted to shoot like this one. And then we had to deal with the problems that basically we had to deal with light control. That's why I added this part here, this flags here for me to be able to control the spill of the light towards her only and not towards the, the, the walls. And the fact that we use a very light 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 yes a very um, easy to carry light we were able to boom it even though my assistant was just holding it and my camera did the rest okay so what were my settings actually i don't even know so let me check here in the xf data i actually shot it at f2.8 which i set obviously the aperture priority was at 2.8 the aperture was at 2.8 but the shutter speed was 1 over 60 and my iso was at 400 and as you can see here I actually have it at negative one. In other words, I was underexposing the existing ambient light. Because one thing that I failed to mention in this particular shoot, it was that there was, there was a lot of existing ambient light. In other words, there was light coming from behind, from the side, and all of those things I had to control. But the most important thing was that all those, light, all those lights were the same color temperature. So those lights actually served as fill light. Um, it opened up the shadows in certain areas, like in this particular case, it opened up the shadows here, here. So it's not completely dark. So what I did was I balanced my light and made this one about a stop over existing ambient light, or maybe about two stops, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But the nice thing again about shooting with continuous light is that what you see is what you get. So in other words, I actually set my existing ambient light to about negative one just so that I can focus by light and made this particular light stronger to get the proper exposure on my subject. Okay, so now let's go to editing. So my raw conversion software is Capture 121 and this is basically what I did. So this is a straight out of camera image. Basically, I just adjusted my exposure by 0.15 stops. So that means I got my exposure right already and my white balance I adjusted to this one. I'll show you the original white balance there. It's a bit warm, it's a bit too warm for my taste, so that's why I adjusted it and made it a bit cooler but still on the warmer tone. Now, the problem with shooting with one light, especially in an angle high above if the subject is not looking up, is that sometimes you get um, dead eyes or not too much light on their face. But again, since I was shooting in RAW and this camera has beautiful dynamic range, I was able to bring out a little. 
So that's why I put in an adjustment layer here just to make the subject brighter, okay? Now, as you can see, my issue again is still the eyes. So I put in an adjustment, another adjustment layer and just made the eyes brighter. And that's it. So from there, I open it up in Photoshop. So now here in Photoshop, this is where I do my general cleaning. So the first thing that I do, obviously, is I do a bit of skin smoothening, but actually not really skin smoothening. It's just really taking out some of the blemishes on the face. Now, with Vanessa, I was actually very fortunate. I really didn't have to do much. So as you can see here, this is the cleaned up image. There you go. You don't really see too much difference, to be honest. She had beautiful skin to begin with, so it was very simple. It's a very, very simple edit. And then I sharpen. That's it. That's how simple it is. The most important thing is make sure that you get everything right in camera. And having to use a continuous light made everything so much easier, especially in a situation like this. Now, if I were shooting outdoor, obviously I can't use this one because it's not strong enough. But in situations, again, like this one that we are shooting indoor with continuous, beautiful ambient light already, I just needed something like this to highlight the subjects. And I controlled all existing ambient light using aperture priority just by underexposing. And again, this continuous light, treat it like a flash, you can control the power. And the best thing about it, it is also by color. In other words, you can control the color temperature to match that of existing ambient light. So this light, really, this light allowed us to shoot five layouts in a span of two hours that includes um, makeup retouch and changing of clothes. So yes, that's how efficient it is. So that's why I love shooting with this one, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Now, if you wanna see some of my images or more of my images, you could always follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino, okay? Till the next video.